Hello and welcome everyone to anubavtrainings.com. In this session, we will discuss about how to get started with Business Application Studio. In my last video, I have discussed about motivation for Business Application Studio in Cloud Platform and how an important Business Application Studio is now. As you know, the Web ID full stack in Cloud Platform for Neo environment is going to discontinue soon. So most of you who are developing UI5 and Pure application or attending my course on UI5, you would observe that the SAP Web ID full stack from the new environment is going to discontinue from 13 November onwards. And this is the message you are getting uh, as, in, as I'm recording it today, uh, that this will be going to discontinue. So those who want to upgrade themselves with SA, latest SAP UI5 and Fury training, please subscribe my training on UI5 and Fury with Anubav Trainings to understand how to build UI5 Fury apps from scratch with Business Application Studio, the latest batch. However, in this video, we will see how to get started with Business Application Studio and create your first UI5 application by consuming an ODATA service from real S4 HANA system. So I'll switch it over. So how do you get started? So what scenario are we going to see in uh, today's session? is very first of all what i'm going to do is i will um, set up the business application studio i call it as bass and the next step what we will do is we will create a space a dev space now if you are new to the terminology of dev space please go back and check my last video on youtube about motivation for business application studio as a next step what we will do is we will create a new project and of course i'm going to use create project from template of type basic ui5 application and then we will just go ahead and enhance our project with uh, a simple list control inside our view look at and experience the editing capabilities of the new application studio and finally we will do the build of the application also just a little bit of pinch of command line interface and then finally test the application locally yeah so this is what the complete process what we will see in the today's lecture so the main advantage of uh, business application studio is to provide a unified multi-cloud environment to develop applications test them build run and finally deploy them to the final application in the application studio uh, in the business application uh, platforms now what we will do is we will go back and now what when you log on to the cloud platform cockpit here earlier you were seeing the web ide but now you see Business Application Studio, which is the next generation Web IDE for multi-cloud applications. So let's switch it over. And the moment I click, you can see it is launching SAP Business Application Studio for us. Fantastic. So once it launched, you can see now we can create a dev space, which is nothing but a virtual machine spinning over as per the requirement we have for our development. So create a new dev space. And now you can see these different development options to choose from if you would like to develop a, which kind of application. So the most popular one are UI5 Fury and CAP. Now we are interested though today on the UI5 applications. So we can choose SAP Fury as our uh, preferred um, virtual machine option for the Fury development. So what it includes, includes all these features out of the box, you can see. And additionally, you can also include some of these plugins or modules. Yeah, but I'm interested only on simple UFO apps. So I'm not going to choose in today's episode these uh, different plugins and extensions. But of course, in my training, I've explained how to use some of these plugins and allow you to develop multi target cloud applications. So let's give a namespace here. I'm going to give Anubhav UI5 or let's say just Anubha dev and we can click on create my dev space and I can see my dev space is created and it's spinning a new virtual machine 
setting up the virtual environment, installing or uh, activating the required desired runtimes, which I would need to be able to develop this application, which is of type Fiori. Yeah. So like this, you can have different uh, dev spaces configured uh, depending on the development needs, as we also understood the architecture of Business Application Studio in the in the last video. If you've not seen that, please click on the I button, uh, and then you'll be able to do that. So now it's running. So let me switch it over to the dev space. So you can see it's redirecting me to my newly created dev space. And you would see exactly a Visual Studio like environment, like if you would have ever experienced the Visual Studio, um, the Microsoft Visual Studio, you'll see a similar kind of environment will open over here. Yeah. So now you can see here, we can start creating a new project. So very first thing we'll do is create a new project from template right away. You can of course create a new file from scratch and also you can check out a project from the GitHub. And all of this we will cover as part of our detailed training. So you can see where will this project files be stored on my file system. So this is the directory where system is going to store this. Yeah. Now what kind of application uh, we would like to choose. So I'll say I want to generate a freestyle Fury application. And now it will load all the desired templates of Freestyle Fury application. Now I'll also choose what's my target uh, application where it's going to run. Ultimately, I will say it's going to run on Cloud Foundry. Uh, maybe you can also choose ABAP if you later on want to deploy this application to an ABAP based system like S4 HANA. So I would choose it as Cloud Foundry because I would like to develop a cloud based Fury application. And then the, the generated artifact will be MTAR. Uh, multi-target archiving file because that's the run and that's the kind of deploy deployable file for Cloud Foundry. So that that's what it uh, it will decide depending on. I'll, I'll go with a simple uh, UI5 application with a blank view. I would like to get started, and I'll go next. Now remember when you are trying it, probably um, you know you are trying it after um, maybe six months or the day I'm recording the video. Uh, it probably may not match exactly with the same flow. So you may have to see a little differences when you are doing things. Let's give a project name. So I'm going to say Anubal Trainings. And we click on Next. And now I'll just do not touch this uh, particular settings. So I'll say just keep it standalone. And I say Next. And we can also give our module name. Let it be um, a UI5 module. And I don't want to add any authentication and we can give namespace for our project. Yeah, so let's say finance.account receivables. And then I will say next. And now it's time for me to provide my view name. So I would like to give the view name as main view. Would you like to also add data service? Yes, why not? So I'll say yes. And I click on next. And now here we, uh, we have an option to choose our target system. So I would like to consume an audit service which I've already built on my S4 HANA system. So I will just choose um, over here my SAP system. You can see there are a variety of options to choose from. Now it loads the list of destinations available in my CF and I have already configured the destination uh, before this session. So you can choose my system here. You can see my system. And now it's time for me to provide my auditor URL path. So which is what I can get it easily uh, from my, my gateway system over here. And now from here, we can copy our service path prefix. Let me copy that. Go back again to application studio and provide my service path over here. Now system reads all the necessary uh, data set, uh, entity sets available. I can click on next. And now you can see system will uh, automatically create my project in the workspace. So now you can see here the project has been successfully generated. And now what we need to do is we need to open the workspace. So workspace is nothing but your folder in this virtual machine where the project has been created. So I can click on open workspace from here also, or I can also choose the option here. So this is where we will have, basically it's a directory in the virtual machine, which is created on the name of our project, which we can open and check. So if I click on open workspace, you would see that system will now 
launch our workspace over here where we can find our newly created project so you can see it has added um, you know the application project so this whole thing is my project inside this it has uh, since it's a cloud foundry deployment uh, it also generates an app router which is a node.js application and together with that it also adds my ui5 module and in the ui5 module you will see the web app has been created and now you can see your um, complete ui5 project structure as we all understand so we can go to the view and this is where we have our xml view which has been added by the system now the best part here is you can also open the graphical editor those who know ui5 fury would be uh, pretty much aware of it that we have a layout editor which is more of a graphical editor to be able to start editing our xml view now the beauty of this development environment which i like the most is uh, we can uh, customize uh, the development environment which is something which i do not find a feature as a as in the web id that i can keep both my um, xml code and my layout editor code side by side and then i can leverage that together in the whole system so i can just drag it over and just drop it beneath and then i can see on the top my layout editor and just at the bottom my my xml editor over here now especially one important thing here to note that we need to uh, just check our web app folder and as usual as you know in web ide we have a neo app json file which acts as a bridge between the the project and the destination file so since we have created the application type as a cloud foundry project the the connection to the destination is done with the help of a destination service which is a user defined service in a cloud foundry project now this is something which is covered more in detail in our uh, cloud platform training but we just give you the idea that what is making as a bridge between this developer studio and uh, your destination is this new file which is added here uh, called access app json so if you double click on the file you would see that uh, my destination sd4 which is created it's binding my order service with the destination and this is something here done in access app json as compared to neo app json on the web id so that's one quick difference for the developers and now it's time that we go back and um, execute this project uh, before that i would like to also add a couple of uh, code inside so maybe just add a list control very simple list control so i can come down and add a list control and we can choose um, the list item types and we can perform the binding here of the list with the with the line items maybe i just close the view for the entire list control you can also go to the outline view let me also maximize this so you can develop just like uh, you know on web id over here so i can select our list control so first of all we have to go and add the binding for the list control so select the list control and here you can see entity set is not yet defined i just press f for help and now i'll go to define dummy entity set for selected control or i can also choose um you know the binding so let's select the binding with product set entity set and say bind so now my list is bind to product set entity set and it's time that we go to the child element levels um inside this and here we can bind with the properties so i wanted to bind my title property with the um, with the product name so you can select the name and I'll just get rid of this hard-coded value and say bind and let's also bind the description here with the description property so i just add the description here and i perform the binding with relative address so i hope you re recall my concept of um, uh, absolute path and relative path which we learned in ui5 course and it's time to just come out of the full screen mode and i can uh, just click on control s to save the save the file now it's time to execute this project and uh, now to execute this project we have to define a run configuration so run configuration decides how you would like to run the app or would you like to run the unit test or would you like to run this app with a mock server so i would like to run it with the actual destination actual backend system so that's the reason we will go and define a new run configuration and that's something we do it in this run configuration section 
So we go there, click on plus, and now you see a, a little command bar will open here to ask me the module which I would like to execute. So I would like to run my HTML5 module. I select that and what is my run configuration so you can define multiple run configuration per application one for unit test one for opa test one for mock server one for the actual one so the one which i choose is this and i can also run my application with different ui5 versions so i will choose the latest which is offered and then of course just press enter so now you can see uh, a new run configuration is defined if i just also expand this i can see my data source uh, destination so I just take my mouse over and just click on this bind button which is connected to my destination and which is SD4 and now you can see system is also um, you know connected um, my project to this destination it's finally it's time that we execute this application so I click on this little run button and then you can see now it is launching the debugger and the application instance is started it will be very fast because it's running locally in the virtual environment uh, because i've not yet deployed this app and i can say open in new tab and at this point of time you can see the application is launching in another browser session and it's contacting my uh, sap o data service from my s4 hana system and voila you can see all the data from my sap s4 hana system has been fetched uh, at real time in my Cloud Foundry application. As a last step, you can come back and deploy this application. Uh, so to do that, you have to force build the application. So you can right click um, and, and build the application. And then finally, you can deploy this application uh, to the Cloud Foundry. So when we build this application, what we um, get, uh, get out of it is a MTAR file, a multi-target application. Uh, type of file which can be then deployed to my cloud foundry and then of course I can share it with the whole world because it's going to be in the public cloud yeah so now to build this application we just right click on MTA YAML file and choose here build MTA so just this option you have to select and you would see in a moment a new folder will be created here um, in our application uh, workspace where in that folder we will see an MTA YAML. You can see on about trainings, MTA build temp, and this folder is created and system is packaging everything together as a multi-target cloud application for us so that we can deploy this app to the Cloud Foundry system. Yeah, so you can see MTA archive, and now see this is my multi-target application. I can right click and I can deploy this multi-target cloud application to my Cloud Foundry dev space. And then from there onwards, um, I can directly go to my Cloud Foundry and there I can also uh, see this application would be uh, ready for user to consume on the cloud. So what is exactly happening? This application is, um, is, is deployed on the public cloud, SAP Cloud Platform, Cloud Foundry environment. And from there, it's invoking my SAP S4 HANA backend system. Of course, I have already a cloud connector in the middle uh, for secure tunnel. SSH tunnel to expose the data out to the cloud. So you can see it's creating uh, application router and everything, and uh, it's also deploying all the necessary resources. And, and in the meantime, I can go back to Cloud Foundry environment, and now I can see my application is up and running in the applications tab. So let's go inside. And here is the URL, which is a public cloud URL. Anywhere, any device, anytime, on any platform, you can run this application. This will be public cloud app. Let's click on this. And of course, at this point of time, this root, the application is not found because it's inside your namespace, your, um, your module inside the index HTML file you have to run. So maybe I go back to the locally executed path and I will pick up this namespace UI5 module index HTML copy that route address and then just append that address over here at the end press enter and let's see there you go you can see uh, the application is running of course i have to check why the data is not coming but you can see the application is now running on cloud platform with the public cloud url so this is exactly how uh, you can actually build an end-to-end -end application of course in our detailed training on UI5 Fury, we will learn building this application from scratch, making you understand 
each and every bit of concept of web app folder, how it's created, uh, scaffolding concept, and all the UI5 and Fury concept from scratch as part of our training on SAP UI5. So if you are new to UI5, maybe finding it a little difficult for um, understanding, don't worry. Uh, we have designed our course in a way that you are a college pass out, you're a fresher, you can also learn UI5 and Fury with us on cloud platform. So with that, it's a wrap on today's session. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and got an idea. And especially those who are existing student of mine, they are um, experiencing an issue while, while putting themselves on the uh, on the new environment. And I at least uh, now you can at least get started with the new development environment. So thank you so much. And in our next video, we will see how to migrate your existing Web ID project to the Cloud Foundry. So with that, Anubhav signing out. Thank you so much once again, and I will see you in the next video.